Okay, once again, welcome to our produce spotlight today. I'm gonna share our, excuse me, not our, my screen with you to give a little bit of a presentation all about apples. Okay, um, can everybody see my screen? If I can just get one or two folks to, to give me a yes in chat, that would be great. Yes, perfect, perfect, thank you guys. All right, lots of thumb, thumbs up. So we are good to go here with our produce spotlight. So let's talk about nutrition first, right? Here we are, the nutrition team, dietitian. Um, let's talk about the nutrition component about apples. Why we have that saying of a, an apple a day can potentially keep the doctor away, right? And the first one that I have on here is that apples are full of fiber. Okay, and fiber can do a lot of different things for us, depending on the type of fiber that is in the food that we're eating. All right, so we're not going to get into a huge fiber lesson, but so you know, there is soluble fiber and there is insoluble fiber, and they both do different things for our body. One of those fibers really helps with our gut health, which um, is a really big trendy word right now, and usually gut health is a trendy word because of good bacteria, okay? The thought of wanting to get more good bacteria or probiotics into our gut, which we definitely wanna do. So apples aren't a big source of probiotics by any means, but they do have that fiber component and that's how they are helping our gut health. It's because they're helping with our digestion, breaking things down and keeping our digestion in equilibrium, okay? So that's the way that the fiber in apples is helping our gut health, but the types of fiber that are in apples also help our heart health, okay? So similar to, you know, if you've seen commercials about oats and oats lowering cholesterol, apples have those types of fiber as well to help lower our cholesterol potentially, and therefore um, it may decrease our risk for certain heart diseases, okay? So apples have all of that, which can help both our gut and our heart, but then also fiber just has this general role of helping us to feel more full, okay? So if you're eating a meal and afterwards you're still hungry, the questions that we always ask are, did you have something with fiber? And then did you have something with protein? Because both of those things are gonna fill us up. Now, I will say, that the fiber in apples is mainly going to be in the skin, okay? One apple usually has about four grams of fiber, and a lot of that is found in the skin. Now, if you have little ones at home like me, maybe they don't like the skin, or for some age groups, the skin can be a bit of a choking hazard. That's okay, right? I would rather, you know, my daughter snack on apples even without the skins on than not have apples at all because they still have a lot of other great qualities. So if you're in that boat too, um, you don't like the skin on apples, it's okay. We're not going to get the same amount of fiber, but it is definitely going to be a better snack than some of the alternatives. All right. Another big reason that we want to have apples in our day are for the antioxidant quality. So lots of vitamins and minerals in apples that can help um, with a variety of things, but particularly inflammation. Inflammation is another one of those really big trendy words. And what we want to avoid is having our body in a state of chronic inflammation um, because chronic inflammation or stress on our body can increase our risk for heart disease, diabetes, obesity, some cancers. So the more antioxidants that we have in our body, especially from apples, is a way that we can help reduce that inflammation, that chronic stress on our body, and hopefully not go down those different disease paths, okay? So now into the nitty gritty about apples, how to pick them, very similar to other fruits and vegetables. Of course, we want to avoid bruises and blemishes, but we know that we are picking a good apple um, if it has that subtle sweet scent. So whether you're picking them up from our stores or this is a great time of year, of course, to go to the local apple orchards to pick apples, which is one of my favorite things to do, you want to make sure they have that subtle, sweet scent. Um, and that's when you know they're really ready to use. 
Okay. So next up, just some hacks to keep in mind whenever you are using apples, particularly if you are cutting them. So maybe you are cutting them up for an afternoon snack or to, um, to make something. When apples are cut, if you're a big apple eater, of course, you've probably seen this before. Um, I see somebody in chat saying that you went apple pick picking last weekend. I'm jealous. I'm, um, I am itching to go. So hopefully soon. Um, but yeah, so when you cut an apple, a process of oxidation happens, okay? When the flesh of the, op the apple is exposed to air, um, a reaction happens called um, oxidation. And then your apple's flesh starts to turn brown. So there are ways that we can help prevent that. And the first one that you see there, um, oh, I like, I see in chat, somebody says you like apple crisp over apple pie. Very interesting. Okay, nice. Um, I am an apple pie or apple dumpling gal. I would love to hear what everybody else thinks in chat. Feel free to say. Um, so yeah, so lemon juice is one way that we can help prevent that oxidation or that browning, just rubbing a little bit on the flesh. Or if you are making something like an apple crisp or an apple pie, um, and I know I personally take forever. Um, oh, I see a lot of apple crisp in here. I take forever to cut apples. Wow, so many apple crisp. No, I see pie, applesauce. Okay, good pie. All right. I'll say that when I make apple pies, I take forever to cut and peel apples. Like I learned how to make pies with my gram and she always would be like, oh my goodness, Sheena, just give me the apple so I can cut them for you because you're taking so long. If that is you, if you're in the same boat as me, then as you're cutting and peeling your apples, you can put your apples in a big bowl of water and that will help um, prevent them from browning so much as well as um, keeping them hydrated, right? So they don't dry out while they're sitting there. I feel like it's a good mix of what you guys are saying here in chat between apple pie, crisp, and dumpling. I actually just had an apple dumpling last night and it was quite tasty. Um, but yeah, I am, and I've made a good bit of applesauce too. Anybody ever make applesauce in the crock pot? That's one of my favorite things to do because then it just, makes the whole house smell lovely. Um, would placing them in water dilute the flavor? No, it's just to hold them for a little bit of time. I wouldn't suggest like putting them in there for a couple days, but um, just, you know, while you're trying to make something is completely fine. I see some people said about, you make everything in a crock pot, somebody's use the Instapot, which is a great thing to do. Make it on the stove top. Um, Instapot. Yes, Instapot is a great way to do it. I think I have done that before too, but I'm good with the slow cook method. Apple butter. Oh, guys, I'm getting hungry. Okay. Okay. Keep feeling free to, uh, share in chat, but I will go over here to the next slide. So storing and cleaning, we do want to keep apples in a cool place. Um, and you know, similar to like potatoes, and you can keep them a little bit longer if you refrigerate them with a damp paper towel over them, especially if you did cut them. Um, and as always, we want to rinse our apples thoroughly. Even if you are taking the skin off of them to make a pie, whenever your knife cuts through that skin and into the apple, we are exposing the flesh of the apple to anything that was on the skin. Um, I see, how do you do crock pot applesauce? There's lots of recipes out there, but plain and simple, it's just cutting and peeling your apples, putting them in the crock pot with a little bit of water. And then I actually like to put a whole um, vanilla bean in my crock pot applesauce. And so like I will put the vanilla bean and let it cook. And then when it's time to take it out, I'll scoop out everything in the vanilla bean so it can get in there. Um, so that's how I like to do it. And then you cook it for like four hours or you could do eight hours on low, four hours on high. Um, but yeah, try it with the vanilla bean in the crock pot. Super yummy. Um, okay. All right. We'll talk more about pie here in a moment when we're making our recipe. 
trivia question for you guys about apples that you can put your answer in chat. Do apples sink or float in water? A whole apple intact, not cut. Do they sink or do they float? Wow, a lot of you may have uh, been bobbing for apples before. Yep, yep, they do indeed float. Okay, so that's a fun experiment to do with little ones at home. Um, but because of the density of apples, they do float. Now, I'm not going to give you the answer to this one, although if you've been around with us for a while, I might have done this with you before. But look into whether lemons and limes sink or float. One of them floats, one of them sinks. So, all right. Next. So now to eat or to bake. Okay, so that's not a necessary question, although you may answer it if you want. But, um, you know, always get questions of what types of apples should I be baking with versus just eating or putting into a um, salad. Um, I see a lot of you are asking about the lemons and limes. We might do a class on that sometime. So I'm going to about it and not and not tell yet. Um, but some of you did get it right. <laughs> um, so in terms of baking or eating, how to use them, I think this is a really good simple chart with a lot of the common ones over here on the left. Some really great ones for baking being your gala, your um, golden delicious, which are both what we're going to be using today. John Gold is another one. Um, I see somebody mentioned um, wine sap apples are really great ones to bake with. Absolutely. Over on your right, we have the ones that are better to just eat. So your Red Delicious, your Pink Lady, Fuji. And then you have in the middle ones that are good for both. Okay. See a lot of you mentioned the Honey Crisp. Um, that's always a big favorite. Macintosh is what um, usually people use for applesauce, but I um I grew up uh, making apple pies with my gram using Macintosh. I see somebody put red delicious are never good and I'm, I'm gonna have to agree. Um, my daughter loves apples and she's not big into red delicious either. Um, Granny Smith is usually a popular one for pies as well to kind of cut the sweetness of how a pie usually is because they're a bit more tart. So lots of different directions that you can go for there. Um, in a lot of my science of food classes in college, we talked about apples and their different uses. And my professor was always under um, the impression or just felt very passionate, I will say, about um, to make the best apple pie, you need eight different <laughs> varieties of apples. So like one, um, one times eight different types of apples to make the best apple pie because it's just going to lend the best flavor, sweetness, tart, and whatnot. So just something to keep in mind if you're into baking pies. I see some of you say you agree. Okay. All right. Let me stop. Um, oops. Let me stop sharing my screen here. Okay. We are going to switch gears to our recipe here. So let me, I'm going to stop my video here and I'm going to turn my video on to my ingredients. So just give me a second here to get that going. Okay. All right. So now you guys uh, should see my ingredients. Yes. Can you give me a thumbs up. Yes, perfect, perfect. Okay, guys. So what we are making today are mini apple tartlets. Okay, and I should have continued sharing my screen and showing you what they look like at the end, but I'll bring it back up then. Thank you for the thumbs up. Um, so we're making these mini apple tartlets. And why I think these are really great is because they can kind of be like a bite sized apple pie. Okay, um, so the two apples, we're gonna start with that first. The two apples that we're using today um, is a gala apple, and then this is actually a ginger gold apple. And let me tell you about ginger gold here in a minute, but 
all I'm simply going to do while you know as I'm rambling on here is just I'm leaving the skins on. You can take them off if you want, leaving them on, chopping them up and putting them in my bowl here. Okay. So ginger gold is going to have a very similar profile to a golden delicious apple. Um, but it's going to have a little bit of that, as the name implies, gingery uh, feel to them. Um, hold on, just look in here in, in chat. Uh, oh, okay. Okay, all right. I see it. some of you are chatting among yourself. Good, feel free to continue. So yeah, um, these are local in our store. You can get a bag of these. We don't have them all the time. But um, if you are a big apple enthusiast, this is a great one um, to use for pies. And I will give you guys a little secret. So as I said, I love making pies. I've been doing it for a long time. And I may or may not have gotten a couple blue ribbons at um, some local fairs for making apple pies to the point that a couple years ago, I actually, because of um, getting first place in some fairs, you can then take your pie to the farm show. Um, so I did that several years ago, did not place at the farm show, was really bummed, but um, it was still a great experience and really fun. And um, the pie that I made that year, I did use the ginger gold apples and I mixed them with uh, strawberries. So it was an apple strawberry pie. And I tell everybody that that is how a dietitian wins an apple pie contest by using not only one fruit, but two fruits. <laughs> so yeah, ginger gold apples, strawberries, give it a try sometime. Uh, all right. So we're going to keep chopping up my Gaelic here and get this in. But while I finish chopping that, let me see. I can do my pull here for you guys. Um, I can bring it up. So even though we're talking about apples today, this is something we talk about on the team a lot, especially this time of year. And that is, are you team apple or are you team pumpkin, right? I feel like the apple season gets really overwhelmed by all the pumpkin spice people out there so eager to see what you guys think team apple or team pumpkin right now team apple's winning i'll give you guys until i finish chopping up this one to respond i do see some of you say in chat that you love both that's acceptable All right, I got one more in case you, you didn't get your vote in there yet. Team Apple or Team Pumpkin? Too hard to pick one. Okay, okay. All right, I will stop the poll here. Team Apple won 76% to 24 percent i am or now it changed a little bit 75 to 25 that is i am um oh i see somebody said cherry crumb pie i will also agree with that um did i stop sharing that do you guys did it go away i hope um i will agree with that my favorite favorite type of pie is a tart there excuse me yes it has to be a sour cherry pie. I just saw that. A tart or sour apple cherry pie is my favorite, favorite, favorite type of pie. Okay. So do we have our, you guys back here on the screen here, see my apples? Okay. So to this here, um, we are going to add a quarter of a teaspoon of um, almond extract. Okay. Um, and guys, I can't find my quarter of a teaspoon today because it's Tuesday, you know, and why would I be able to find it? Um, so I'm just going to do half of my half a teaspoon here. All right. So a uh, quarter of a teaspoon of almond extract. You could switch that for vanilla if you want. We're using almonds because after these bake, we're going to be doing apples. Uh, not excuse me, apples. We're going to be doing almonds on top. 
I see a lot of you are still having conversation about the apple and pumpkin, which I will comment on in a, in a minute here. Um, next, we are going to do some ground ginger. Okay, so same situation. Oh, this is a new ginger. Uh, same situation. We're going to do a quarter of a teaspoon. So let me get my... And, you know, it's okay. It's just a spice, so we can do more or less if we need to. All right, quarter of a teaspoon. And that in there. And then we're going to just do an eighth of a teaspoon of cloves. So I'm just going to do a little sprinkle, right? There we go. And then we're going to do three tablespoons of apricot preserves. For those of you who mentioned that you like tart cherry pie, my favorite type of jam to make is actually a sour cherry and apricot um, jam. I love it. My grandma and I used to make that a lot. Okay, so three tablespoons of this. If you don't have apricot jelly, no worries. I mean, we do sell it. Um, fairly inexpensive at our store. We have our store brand, once again, of the apricot. But if you don't have it and you have something like strawberry on hand or raspberry, perfectly fine. It's just adding a little bit of moisture, a little bit of flavor. So um, whatever you got is perfectly fine, okay? So I'm gonna mix this up and then I'm gonna start putting it into my puff pastry, okay? So um, we sell our Taste of Inspirations puff pastry in our stores in the frozen section. You get two sheets, okay, and one. Today we only need one. So you want to make sure that you thaw this ahead of time. It only needs about 20 minutes to thaw. If you don't have 20 minutes to spare or you forget, like myself, you can pop this in the microwave for about a minute and 30. Now this is what it looks like when you open it up, okay? The recipe is going to call for you to lay this out and roll it and then cut it into 12 pieces. If you don't have a rolling pin, no problem. All I did just for ease today, is, since this is already kind of divided into three sections, is I just tore it where it was already cut. Mine was a little bit more frozen at the time. And then cut each of these three sections into four and then go ahead and pop them right into your um, your muffin tin here. I did spray the muffin tin because we don't want these to stick. So I'm just going to I'll move this over, put this here, just stirring up my apples a little bit more to get that jam nice and incorporated. And then I'm going to start filling this up. Um, I have my oven set at 375, and then these are going to bake for about 20 minutes. Now, I can really smell the almonds, I can smell the cloves, I can smell the ginger. And that brings me back to the team apple versus team pumpkin scenario. So, I will say that usually when we think about pumpkin, all right, guys, and I, this is, I'm, I'm not trying to dissuade the team pumpkin folks, but Pumpkin itself does not have a lot of flavor, okay? Like if you were to open a can of pumpkin or cook down a fresh pumpkin, um, you're not going to taste much, okay? What we think of as the flavor of pumpkin is actually the spices that go into pumpkin spice things, okay? So pumpkin pie spice or pumpkin spice, like a PSL, is usually a combination of cinnamon, nutmeg, clove, ginger, and allspice. And can I just tell you guys how much I don't like nutmeg? Like that is my least favorite um, spice. Love the others, just not that. Um, so when we think about pumpkin, team pumpkin, we really should think more about the spices because team pumpkin is really more team spice. And that paired with a little bit of sugar is usually what gives us the essence of what pumpkin things are. So. Just something to keep in mind, okay? 
Now, if you are Team Pumpkin, or even if you are not Team Pumpkin, I do encourage you to check out our October classes. I forget what day it is, but it is for a produce spotlight. I'm going to be um, doing one on pumpkins, how to make your own fresh pumpkin puree. So rather than getting from the can, if you want to be a little old fashioned with me and um, cook down a pumpkin, join me for that class. And last year I did that and we made a fresh pumpkin pie, which my daughter is definitely team pumpkin, although she really loves apples too. And um, she loved when my grandma used to make her a fresh apple pie. So I need to, to be doing that here soon for her. For her. Or pumpkin um, chocolate chip cookies is another big one in my house. Um, but needless to say, that day that we do the pumpkin um, produce spotlight, if you join us that, we're going to be making a fresh pumpkin pasta. Ingredients only being pumpkin and flour. So that will be a fun one to check out. Okay, so there we go, guys, all filled up. I am going to put these in my oven at 375 for um, 20 minutes. Oh, I see somebody said in chat pumpkin cheesecake. I love any type of cheesecake. I am there for that. Okay, so after I put these in the oven for 20 minutes at 375, I'm going to take them out and sprinkle them with some slivered almonds and then a nice little drizzle of honey. And they are done. Um, let me let me bring you guys back here to to me and turn this back on. All right. Okay. So that's it, guys. Um, I still see lots of you chatting and chat about pumpkin. I definitely hope that you decide to attend that class in um October. And um, I can actually, I can uh. I can check for you real quick then to see what day it is if you're interested. So we will talk all about those pumpkins then. I'm going to go ahead and uh, stop our recording. Okay. And I will show you.